Why your stupid ass popping willies? What's up? Welcome back to Comedy Commentary. Now, today I have a special one for you, so make sure you watch this video to the end. It's an interview with comedian, writer, SNL guy, Dave Cyrus. He is a very nice guy. He was nice enough to do this interview with me. Now this is gonna be like a five part series because I don't wanna put the whole 45 minute conversation up on one video. I think that'd be pretty pointless and nobody would watch it. So here's some small digestible clips. This is part one. And I do recommend watching this if you are a comedy fan and you would like to get into comedy. You'd like to know the insides of the comedy world. This is a very good interview to learn that. So please watch to the end and enjoy the interview. No, yeah, great. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I met you before, right? Where did we meet? We I, met thought, I, I, mean, I thought you looked familiar. I wasn't, I didn't remember where. It was very, very brief. It was at Flappers Comedy Club. I, I, yeah, I knew it was some club. Yeah. yeah. Out in Burbank. Like you that did, was a long time ago. Oh, yeah. It was like a, a year, two years ago or something. Way more than that. You think so? Had to be. I haven't done Flappers in forever. No, you did Flappers. No, you definitely did Flappers two years. I was 20. Two years ago, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw you there and you did your set and I shook your hand. I was like, hey, good job. You said, thank you. Oh. And that's when you introduced Machine Gun Kelly on there. Oh, that was that was that show where we brought where we brought MGK right, right, yeah. and I I had been coaching him and he did that the, he did that joke about jerking off in Denver. Yeah, Sorry that makes that. sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then that, that now I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I after I don't know if he heard me, but when I was walking back from the bathroom and he was walking to like the back room. I like shook his hand. I told him good job. And I was like, Hey, your beard is weird. But I don't, yeah. think, I don't think he heard me. Well, oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, I tried. Okay. So, uh, I'm sure right. he would have appreciated the, the shout out. Yeah. I hope so. So, uh, like, okay. So you're a funny guy, right? Thank you. I saw you do stand up. Like you're good at doing stand up, but I heard you say in an interview, you like, you can write jokes and stuff, but you're funny, but you don't have like a good stage presence or whatever. Yeah, that's how I kind of feel about myself. I don't, I'm just, I'm not, I don't think I get mileage out of like charisma on stage. I think I'm just sort of a guy who can write decent jokes nah, and I, tell them. I disagree. You're, a, you're good up there. You had the crowd in your hand from what I saw. Well, thank you. I think, uh, I, I don't know. I, just, I feel like just being like charismatic in a stand, in stand up is like a very kind of ethereal thing and like it's really hard to put your finger on. And I think there are just certain people who can just be funny and like kind of be funny and like without really having to do much. And I don't think that's one of that. That's just not, not something I do. I feel like I have a very standoffish presence and I have to re have like really good jokes to get through that. And like, you know, and if you're making people laugh, then yeah, things can go great. And like, I've certainly, you know, been happy with how the show's gone. It's just, I think I'm a really awkward, non like naturally charismatic person. Yeah. I just don't, I just don't think I have that gene. Yeah, and then, like I'm just where people just look at you and they just kind of like you. Yeah, yeah, and no, I I have that same thing. I think. Thing where people it just look. happens. It's no one's fault. It just happens because yeah. people people all think they're psychic. They think yeah. if they don't like someone, it's because they've noticed something about them. It's like you don't know shit. Yeah, you don't know shit. Uh, also, you mentioned Chris D'Elia in that thing, saying where's he at now? And I oh, did I? <laughs> you no, know, I remember that because somebody asked you, it's like just say Chris D'Elia, just say Chris D'Elia. And then you were like, uh, where's he at now? What's he doing? What was the context of that? At, was it at was you saying, like, I can write jokes, I'm a funny guy, but I don't have that charisma. And somebody said, Do you have do you know any comedians that have the charisma that just write shitty jokes? Oh. <laughs> and I said Chris D'Elia, and yeah. where is he now? Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That sounds like me. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I said that prior in one of my videos. I was like, Chris D'Elia, he's just very like jumpy and charismatic and now you think of him as this weird guy you can't really see him up on stage as funny anymore because now you know like, the well the funny story the funny thing is where is he now it's still selling out casinos despite the me too's really he's, he's <laughs> as far as i remember he was still selling out he was still getting shows uh because you know let's face it in stand-up all you got to do is fill up a certain number of people yeah and Louis, Bill Cosby, Chris D'Elia, a lot of comics out there who were quote unquote canceled, but they could still fill a, a venue. Yeah. So they did. Didn't, didn't Louis just 
can you only get shows in like Israel or something? Oh no, Louis Louis is like back. Louis like I hear about Louis doing shows all over like in the US. Yeah. So I mean, Louis, I think there's two schools of thought. One, it's that the fact that Louis is back to doing stand up is an indictment of the entire industry and the culture in general or the idea that considering where Louis was before, the stand doing small stand up venues is a punishment in and of itself. Now, obviously, I think that that's a bit of a flippant idea, but you, you see what I'm saying. Like, yeah. but yeah, no, Louis is out there. Louis's doing shows. He was gone for maybe what, 10 months yeah. after the event. But the thing is with Louis, Louis's um, Me Too was in the category of, for the most part, it was the stuff that you judge someone for not stuff that you incarcerate someone for. Yeah, no, and I think that, right? there's a big difference between how the public reacts to those. You know, Aziz got uh, an embarrassing story told about him that it seems most people agreed was not the kind of thing that you should lose everything for. Yeah. Um, certainly embarrassing. You know, it's certainly, you know, it's not the kind of thing you want people saying about you, but people thought that like comparing this to being a rapist is... It is a bit irresponsible, is you what think people say. That's also how they felt with Cristalia. Well, Cristalia was uh, a different story because it just it came off so creepy. Even though there was, as far as I'm aware, there wasn't actually a smoking gun of him uh, doing anything physical with a girl who was underage. It was just they saw a pattern of sleazy behavior. But once again, I, I don't know all the details of it, but it does seem like it was. He never actually, like I said, like he was hitting on a 16 year old. And then stopped when he found out she was 16. Yeah. That doesn't look good, but no. it's also not something you go to jail for. Yeah. Of so I think that that's sort of, that's why Crystalia will probably survive overall because the not go to prison for them, or at least not have the potential to be crimes, is different. It's different than a guy who was revealed to have been physically abusing someone. But you know, look, there's a there's thresholds here. There's certainly things you can do that aren't crimes that you should still lose your job over. Yeah, for real. But these are all, you know, we have to sort of, as a people, kind of, the, there's, there's gray areas we have to decide, you know, case by case, well, is the, how far did this go? How, what's an appropriate level of punishment for this? And for different people, it's going to be different, you know? Harvey Weinstein is, was a very easy to judge case he was a monster he was a true monster somebody who belonged to to die in jail for what he did mm -hmm. but someone like you know someone like louis it becomes mo much more of a uh, you know much more of a question much more of a, a debate as to you know what do you do about someone how much can you stop someone from working really yeah. if you if what they did isn't prosecutable and i know that there are arguments that he did things that you could be prosecuted for, but in, you know, in, in practical reality, Louis C.K. is not in danger of, of going to jail. Yeah, of course. Okay, so moving on from the Me Too stuff. So you vote for- If we have to. Yeah, yeah, we do. So you vote for SNL, Comedy Central, and obviously the King of Staten Island. How mm -hmm. does that happen? How does a, is that like a Jewish New York thing? So like- I can tell you exactly what happened. I was doing stand-up for a long time. I was doing sketch comedy for a long time. I had some success on YouTube, but I didn't get to really write professionally until just by happenstance, years and years ago, I was friends with Pete Davidson and he was given his first writing opportunity. And he, after trying with some other people, uh, you know, just decided to see how writing with me would go. And it just went very quickly. It, it, we seemed to be able to generate a lot of good stuff on our own that got immediate attention. This is when Pete was maybe 18, 19, before SNL. And so we had some contracts to do some comedy stuff, some movie and TV stuff uh, that you know had a lot of potential. But all those things had to be canceled because Pete got hired by SNL. I'm gonna throw this nigga over the ledge. Bruce Willis in six cents. He don't know that he's dead. Could let him find out for himself or I could show him instead. And I see his scared tactics. You was weird trapped. You was home asleep and on your homie air match. Every artist that's in the game know you were actual lane. You was a bum action for change and that's factual lane. I heard you bought a new hairline because it wouldn't grow no more. For the road, you was getting jewelry off the clothing store. It took you.